Okay, so we're back and now we have connected to the MIDI output uh, into an uh, access virus uh, sitting on the floor here. And uh, have some sounds going on there. Um, so what's going to happen now is that um, I've turned down the volume on, uh, on all these because we're still outputting gate and control volts here to the uh, regular synthesizer. But right now I am uh, uh, only concerned about the MIDI output. So if I start play, now we're actually playing the virus. You can see the somehow, or oh, maybe not. Anyway. Uh, So this is pretty cool that I can control anything using this awesome interface of uh, knobs and switches. Uh, and of course uh, I can also, uh, you know, control that with a drum machine. And, uh, now we are running the master clock from a drum machine to the sequencer that then spits out the notes through MIDI to the axis virus. Which is pretty cool. And if we want to, we can. You can see here now the. They're not in particularly good sync. I wonder why. Well, they're supposed to be uh, using the same frequency, which I, somehow they don't right now. Anyway. Uh, Turn that up. One of the cool things, uh, one of the nasty things I should say about um, doing a sequencer like this is that it's kind of a pain in the ass to select. If you have a long sequence, it can take, if we set it to 32 and turn on all the notes. If I want to control this note, for example, I have to wait forever to for it to come back to there. So I saw somewhere online someone had done this and figured I'd do the same. Uh, let me mount the camera. Uh, if I uh, turn on turn up the sustain here so that each note is playing. If I press uh, shift and hold it in, the note will play. Well, that's reset. Let's try it again. So I'm pressing uh, reset the shift. And here we can hear the quantizer working. If I were to turn that off. Off. On. Press again. Try that. So that's how we can control each, uh, set up the sequence a little bit easier. Um, what else do we have? Do we have anything else fun? Um, no, I think that's it for now. Uh, we haven't really seen the back side of it yet. It is uh, controlled with uh, an Arduino. Let's see if I can get in here. Actually, I'm going to put the camera down. And turn this thing around. And bring the light with me. So we can see how it looks in the back. So, like that. Uh, here we go. There is a sequencer. Uh, it's... Uh, it's a lot of cables, a lot of wires. Every pot is actually connected with uh, with an MTA100 uh, connector, so I can replace each pot, each LED, each jack individually without uh, soldering anything, which is nice. 
it is connected to the uh, to the um, um, to the system just using the uh, .com power connector right there, and then it uses a uh, little voltage regulator to uh, bring the voltage down. Uh, and in here you can actually see the Arduino. It's sitting there. It's a mega. Uh, it's sitting under a shield that I built right now. We can actually see if we look here more. Uh, this is a. Um, the motherboard of the uh, of the sequencer. So we have uh, a little controller for LED here, for LEDs, 40 LEDs, um, 32 pots controlled here. These two, uh, it's an IO expander uh, that can read 96 switches. There's a board with a DAC, uh, and this is the shield where all these are connecting into. And under here is the uh, Arduino Mega. And uh, it all goes back here. Um, so for now, that's uh, going to have to be it. Um, this is so much fun. I'm going to have to build another one now that uh, it's almost running. But uh, as you can see, I also have some other backlogs of uh, panels I made uh, for circuits, uh, for, uh, for uh, PCVs that are in the closet uh, that will be built whenever time uh, reveals itself. Anyway, um, that's it. Uh, here's the system. And, uh, yep, that's it. Have a good one. Thanks for watching.